earning versus de- deserving and conflating those two things. And so it, in my mind, it helps me to, to separate them. Like a, a father can believe that their child is deserving of their love, even or is, yeah, they deserve to be loved. Even if they don't act like it, you know, yeah. even if they're yeah. not, even if they're not doing the things that they want to, I mean, like the prodigal son story also comes to mind. Like your kids. Yeah. Like my kids, but like, yeah, prodigal son goes, does, does all the wrong things, you know, double deuces to the dad. And, um, so clearly like w- by the definition, didn't earn anything. seems like he didn't deserve it, but if he comes back and the father finds deep value in him still and deep value in him coming back and embracing him then that way. Does that not imply that he thinks he's deserving of that? Why would the father throw his way, his love away on something that just isn't worth it? Not only that, but it it's almost beside the point whether he deserves it. He doesn't deserve it by worldly standards, but the father is like, but, hey, you, but, you don't, you're, your mind. There's, That's there's, the thing. He, there's no there, indication that the father is waiting for him to come back and show proper repentance before he's loved and accepted back. The father's disposition toward the son is always, oh, I, I just hope he comes back. There's nothing like, well, let's make sure you properly repent. It's I, just like yeah. he runs out to meet him before the guy even says anything. I'm trying to draw the connection between uh, the idea of deserving and the, the attribution of value in the person. And so because I think you're valuable and, and, and then, then that alone, me, it, it implies that I think that you deserve this, my love. Yeah. I, and I do, I think I do deserve your love. You do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's different than what you're thinking. <laughs> but honestly, I know we're different than God, God, the father yeah. is, a, I use the parent analogy a lot in comparison yeah because i really do think like in our best moments i've said it before and i think it's worth repeating you're forgiving your kid whether they ask for it or not yeah now there might be consequences and whatnot and they, they may, might need to learn in a certain way yeah but there's nothing about you that's like cast them out into the outer darkness whatever that looks like in this world until they repent properly um because you love your kid and you want them to flourish sure and is god better than that i like to think so and if God is not better than that, and there is, because you do get in the Bible, you can find examples where it looks like God is different than that and God is harsher than that. But you also find beautiful portraits, i.e. the prodigal son, other things, um, where it it just does, just it bumps it up a notch to where I am very hopeful in, in the goodness of God in a way that I could never match. Yeah. And what's interesting about that too is that it, it, I, I love that uh, I love that parable because it allows uh, like that I, maybe that is a good definition or a good working definition. Our old Pastor Todd, remember we described how God's wrath is God giving you over to the consequences of your actions, mm-hmm. allowing them. And in some way, you you kind of see that demonstrated there. It's never really it's not talked about directly, but you could see that. Hey, the son wants all this stuff. Okay. I'm going to let you go do it. You're going to experience this stuff now. I'm giving you over to that. And he goes and he does it and it's terrible and he hates it. And then there is repentance. He does come back and it's like, hey, I I screwed up. I screwed up big time. I don't deserve to be here. Yeah. That's an interesting angle to look at it. The father, the son basically is like, well, well I wish you were dead because I kind of want what's coming to me when you are dead. Yeah. And the father's not like, let me tell you why this is a bad idea and no. how this is not, this might backfire on you. Father, like, this is what you want. Okay. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's wild. And if you look at how do people learn, they learn through resistance and they learn through experience very often. Rare is it anybody with kids knows this, especially through teenage years. You can give them the cheat code. I can tell you the mistakes I made yeah. at your age. And I can help you avoid them. Sometimes that works, but it's rare. Right? Yeah. Occasionally it can. But for the most part, it's you telling them plus them experiencing the pain of their mistakes and then growing from it. Yeah. You need gravity, people. And that's gravity. You go to space and everything's easy. You're weightless. 
That's what I say every time I go to space. You start to I'm die. Like, this shit's easy. Look at this. Well, after an edible or two, I feel like I'm in space sometimes. <laughs> um, can some? Oh, you have a tablet. Can you look up yeah. John three uh, sixteen? Yes. And three seventeen. Uh, yes. So for God so loved the world, or maybe I'm thinking of Romans three twenty three and twenty four. Romans three twenty three is one that's we often teach our kids to remind them how shitty they are. <laughs> But we often miss Romans three twenty four. Uh, so do three sixteen and three seventeen. That came to mind. Oh, you first. want to do that one first, or which which one do you want to do first? Whichever one's closer to your fingertips. Oh, I had Romans that dialed in. Do it. Hold on. Uh, now I deleted it. <laughs> Great podcasting. That's what this is. And I do remember. I do remember. Extra word. I remember. At this very house, I think your youngest kid. Yeah got back from VBS and told you, oh, we memorized a verse. And you're like, what's the verse? And it was the Romans passage. Yeah. Which is? Oh, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then it ends right there. Would you read the next verse? Yes. If it lets me. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. Now, why as churches, VBSs and whatnot, we choose that one verse, you memorize that, kids, you drill that into your head when there's a bigger context going there. Now, I, I am not denying that there are parts of the Bible that are problematic and, and seem to be against the universalistic direction that I'm currently inclined to, but it would be worth piggybacking those two verses together yeah. Instead of like telling kids like, yeah, you're terrible. You're worthy of destruction. And I don't believe that's true full stop, but I understand the traditional Christian Romans road gospel presentation of like you, there's nothing you can do to save yourself. And so you need Jesus. And, and some of that I, I believe in, in a way that I would probably interpret a little differently, but it is notable that we just, we push that as Christians, and this is related to the worship song. Yeah. You don't deserve it. You don't earn it. Let's make sure we remind ourselves about that daily. Yeah. And I, I don't think it's healthy. There's probably healthier ways to do it, but yeah. ultimately my kids knowing I love them no matter what is, and I'm going to help them work through their mistakes is better than if you fuck up, then I, you might be out. Yeah. To be fair though, other, to people, be fair. other people's little kids are the worst. <clears throat> they should be told that. I agree, especially yeah. like three-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. The three-year-old boys, all they want to do is punch you in the crotch. That's yeah. all that they want to do. And then they discover their wiener and they just like... Punch themselves in the crotch. <laughs> all right. John three sixteen and 17, or did we... Uh, uh, just do that and did, see... Did uh, we do what you wanted to do? Just just do that and see what comes of it. All right. Let's do that. John three sixteen three seventeen. This is why 24. tablets haven't really taken off because they're not easy to type on especially when you're old and you have fat thumbs yep old and fat that's me and my thumbs all right for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have have eternal life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him i think we just talked about this in church a couple weeks ago as well and and did the old hey do you know what 17 says yeah. And so that there's a reason I brought it up. Good. I'm glad I was vindicated by your reading of the verse I suggested. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that. <laughs> but very often we're sort of taught the chapter and verse things ruins it. There were no chapters and verses in the original text. It was just sort of, that's not how it existed. So we added them and they can be helpful. However, it sort of taught us that each verse is equally applicable all the time because you memorize Verse, single verses. Yeah. And that does a disservice to the bigger context that's often going on. You know what? I'm going to start going up to people at uh, live sporting events who are holding those signs up. And I'm just going to bring with me... A and 17. And 17. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it up there too and be like, John 316 and 17. <laughs> but even 316 is this beautiful picture of for God so loved the world, which... Sure is a counter or maybe a counterbalance to the idea that you don't earn it, you don't deserve it. Maybe that's beside the point because God loves you enough to X out that earning and deserving. 